this is the second video about a supermarket chain <clears throat> and the different costs that they have within that chain and how they may experience economies of scale. In the last video I explained what those were and I gave a couple of examples. I'm going to move on to this cost within the business, electricity. So this is showing the forecast of how much the electricity will cost for the whole of the supermarket chain in three different scenarios. So the first scenario where there are 10 shops in the chain, the second where there are 20 shops in the chain, and the third scenario where there are 30 shops in the chain. And we saw in the last video that the increase from 10 to 20 is 100%, from 20 to 30 it's 50%. If we look at the cost for electricity, electricity used by all of the supermarkets, if there are 10 shops, this is going to be £1,000. If there are 20 shops, it's £2,000. So we can see here that this increase is the same as the increase in the number of shops. This is plus 100%. And then when we go from having 20 shops to 30 shops, this is an increase of 50%. The same thing happens here. When we go from 2000 to £3,000, that's a 50% increase because 50% of 2000 is 1000. And when you add that on, you get 3000. So therefore we can see that when they need more electricity for the extra shops, they pay exactly the same amount for the electricity. They don't get any discount or anything like that. The last one that we looked at before was about stock. And for that one, actually their costs for stock didn't increase by as much as the increase in the number of shops. This was only a 90% increase, and this was a less than 50% increase. That had gone up by 50%. So here, we were getting economies of scale with this pink one, and we were calling this purchasing economies. In this situation, with the electricity, there are no economies of scale. You're not saving any money by making the business bigger. Economies of scale, that's not happening here. Let's look at the next one to do with marketing. So the marketing, if you've got 10 shops in the chain, the amount that you're spending on marketing, so for example, advertisements and promotions to let people know about the business, it used to be £1,500 with 10 shops. When you have 20 shops, it only goes up by £100. That is definitely not a 100% increase from £1,500 to £1,600. So this is less than an 100% increase. And therefore, you're not making the same payment when you have double the amount of shops. You don't have to make double the amount of payment as before. You just pay a little bit more. An example of this would be if the supermarket has taken out an advertisement on buses in the area for their supermarket. If they have 10 supermarkets in total, or if they have 20 supermarkets in total, they won't have to pay the advertising company double the amount of money for the advertisements on the buses when they go up to 20 supermarkets. So what they'll have agreed is an amount to pay for the advertisements on the side of the bus, maybe £1,500. And then even if they open up more shops, they don't have to pay all of this money again. They don't have to pay £3,000 because the advertisements still exist on the buses. There aren't necessarily even more advertisements on buses. You keep the number of advertisements the same, really. And maybe they just charge them a tiny little bit more here, £100 more, because perhaps there's one small change they need to make. Or just to account for the fact that the supermarket chain is getting a lot more benefit because they're now advertising 20 shops rather than 10. Looking at the next scenario, if you have 20 shops, so you've got a 50% increase here, you can see that the marketing doesn't increase by 50%. It just goes up by £100 again. So from here to here is less than a 50% increase. So what you can see happening with the marketing is that for the marketing, when you increase your output, because you've got more supermarkets operating within your chain, your increase in your costs is less proportionally, and therefore your cost per unit is falling. And these ones we call marketing economies. Because that means that as your output goes up, the cost per unit will go down, your long run average costs, 
because your marketing costs are being spread over more and more units and they're only increasing a small amount whereas your output is increasing much more significantly. This one here looking at cashier's wages, this increases by exactly the same proportion as the number of shops. This is a hundred percent increase and from here to here is a 50% increase. So here there are no economies of scale because if you have double the amount of shops you have to pay double the amount of wages. So that there are no economies of scale here. The last one we'll look at is the head office and managerial staff and this is a really good example of economies of scale because when you have any business, large business, you're going to have your head office where lots of executives are working and they are overseeing what's happening in the business. You'll have people doing public relations, human resources, marketing, accounting, law, all of those things in your head office. And those people have to be paid a salary. And it doesn't matter whether you have 10 shops in your chain or 20 shops in your chain, you still pay them the same salary. So that's why, whether you have 10, 20, 30 shops in the chain, this always stays at £10,000. And therefore, you will definitely find that as output goes up, average cost per unit will go down. And that's exactly what economies of scale are. Because you're spreading out these costs over lots more units. In this case, if we're looking, we're talking about a unit being a shop, in this case, it would be 10,000 divided by 10 shops. In this one, it would be 10,000 divided by 20 shops. In this one, it would be 10,000 divided by 30 shops. And the cost per supermarket will be getting less and less as we go along. And these ones are called managerial economies. That's another type of economy of scale. And in the next video I will talk about how for the whole of the supermarket chain if you have some economies of scale you may well see that as your output goes up your long run average costs per unit go down.